Okay, so thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. It's a, thank you, for first of all, for inviting me here to, to give this presentation. It's always a pleasure, of course, to come to beautiful city of Vilnius. And uh, I have been a few times earlier in the Rail Baltica Global Forum, and I have found this event very useful in, of course, for up updating the information on the state of Rail Baltica and also meeting all the key people at one place, in one place at one time. This is, and uh, so I'm not surprised that there were so many people here also today. So I'm, I'm not the only one having this good experience from previous years. And I'm afraid I missed the pictures of the animals two years ago, but maybe next time. Uh, just as my Polish colleague previously, I'm not, uh, I will also talk a little bit of other infrastructure developments in Finland, not only about Rail Baltica, but I will be concentrating on, on that. You know how they say that one picture actually says more than a thousand words, and actually, in my opinion, this picture says actually it all. Here you can see our, let's say, long-term vision of what, in our view, is needed to develop northern transport connections and how Rail Baltica is linked to all of this. In the long term, EU definitely needs a transport connection from Central Europe to the Arctic Ocean. And this is because the strategic importance of the northern regions is increasing year after year. Uh, one part of this is that the northern sea route will open one day, and it will remarkably, of course, shorten the time taken by cargo vessels to travel between the Pacific and the Atlantic. And to make use of this, we need to connect EU with the Arctic Ocean. It may very well, and probably will, take decades to implement this, but we still need to keep this big picture in mind when we take individual projects forward. By now, progress has been most extensive in the Rail Baltic pro project and in the North Sea Baltic corridor extension inside Finland. And I'm very happy to see that the extension of the North Sea Baltic corridor is included in the proposed, uh, proposed text of the new CEF regulation. The Art Rail is a more long-term long -term initiative. A report by a Finnish-Norwegian working group was uh, completed in February this year. And for the time being, any further measures for promoting the railway projects are not suggested. But we might come back to that later on. We'll see what happens. Um, like I have said earlier, and also this morning, Rail Baltica is a very important project for, for Finland. And this is why we also de uh, decided to start negotiations to join the Rail Baltica joint venture. And the idea of, becoming, of Finland becoming a shareholder has been in discussions for several years, but this February it finally then realized. And the decision was part of a large uh, railway investment package in Finland, where a state-owned company was established to finance large-scale railway transport investments. The company has five subsidiaries, one of them being the Rail Baltica company. And the Finnish Rail Baltica company will be the shareholder of RB Rail from the Finnish side. We have already started the preparations regarding the Finnish partnership in the Rail Baltica joint venture. And our aim is timely com completion of Rail Baltica within the set timetable or timelines of 2026. As the first step, we are currently evaluating what is needed to establish this. And the negotiations with the current owners of the company will start when we have a clear picture on, on the situation. But also, as I said previously this morning, we try to be as, as quick and speedy in this process as possible. And then a little bit other topics. So we have started in Finland to prepare for the first time ever a 12-year transport system plan. And this is based on the guidelines laid down by, by a parliamentary working group in December last year. The first one, uh, plan will be prepared for 2031, uh, and preparations of the first plan will be led by our new minister, which will, who will be selected after the elections we have in mid-April now this year. So in the future, we will, uh, this will be a continuously pro progressing process. Uh, the plan covers state as well as municipal, municipal measures, and it will also include a funding 
program for the transport system. The draft plan will be discussed in the Parliament and, uh, and the release of the first plan is scheduled for spring 2020. And this fits very well actually with the EU financing schedule. Our 12-year transport system plan helps us uh, make better use of the CEF2 when the new financial period starts in 2021. We expect that the better predictability of projects will bring economies, economies of scale, more flexible implementation of saving and savings. Even relatively small direct savings from long-term development of transport infrastructure management will have an influence on costs of completely different magnitude in its logistic system and further in the national economy. All this applies also, of course, to the 10 projects in our area. And then back a little bit to the railway. Uh, it is by now quite clear actually to the polit political players in Finland that we are not able to cover all of these important investments and needs by, only by public funding alone. So we need new ideas to bring together also private sector financing. So we have now a few months ago established the state-owned companies to finance large-scale rail transport investments. And the company will be a group with five subsidiaries, as I said previously. So there will be a project companies for lines going west and north of Helsinki. There will be a rolling stock company and a real estate company and then the rail, rail Baltica company. So this will be the fine. And preparations for railway project companies are now underway. The parent company has already been established, but it will take some time for the subsidiaries to be established. Uh, we will be ple pleased to share, of course, our experiences on this financing model later. And here we have a great opportunity, I think, to share experiences and best practices also within Rail Baltica in this sector. In Finland, we have uh, a few mega railway projects, which are, let's say, outside this 12-year plan I mentioned before. If we would include these mega projects into our 12-year plan, they would need nearly all available funding and leave only very limited room for other important projects. And therefore, we have decided to deal with the mega project separately and have these then coordinated in, in the preparation of the 12-year plan. And two of these mega projects, the lines going north and west of Helsinki, are currently included in the rail investment package, where we aim to use project financing. And later, there may be new projects included after we have analyzed and experiences on this model. So just to wrap it up, I could, would say that, um, uh, as you can see, the railway projects are very much on our agenda. We are working very much with these questions in Finland. And our, I would say that our decision to step up our engagement in the Rail Baltica joint venture is a part of this, and it fits very nicely also in this framework we have right now. And uh, just maybe to wrap it up very uh, quickly, I would say that still looking very much forward to a closer cooperation with all of you, and uh, let, let the negotiation start. I left, I, I actually made this speech a little bit shorter because I, I knew that there might be some questions also. So, so the, please, thank you very much. <laughs>